struggling to be happy and if you're dealing with depression, one of the big things is to open yourself up to the real magic of reality instead of buying into this little narrow view of like, okay, this is all there is and we figured this all out and there's no more mystery left. It's all mystery. If you drink that water consistently for six weeks, your body will flush the deuterium out of itself and you will become younger and your symptoms will go away and any problem or whatever your diagnosis is will gradually dissipate. Okay, so we're, we're at an amazing time right now where we're able to really get scientific, right? We're, we're moving past the scientism, which is like belief systems that are influencing what evidence we're willing to look at. We're getting to a point now where we're, we're saying, you know what, throw out the belief systems. Let's just look at this evidence and see what this really means. And what it really means is interesting. It means that we're in a world that is, still has a lot of magic. Mm. And, and we know that. You know, we kind of know that. And that's one of the reasons why we get into these foods and these superfoods, because it activates that. It's one of the reasons why we're into reishi mushroom and chaga mushroom, because it activates this part of our reality that's like, we know is magical. And, and, and chocolate. And chocolate, and, and right? I mean, think about chocolate. We've got this idea of Oompa Loompas and little elves making this food and making chocolate, run a chocolate factory. and. The whole idea of a chocolate factory. This is very is magical it, thinking, fairy and tale. Heart stuff. opening and, and putting us in. Oh, it has anandamide, the bliss chemical. Uh, theobromine means the food of the gods. So, yeah, pretty magical. Right? And so, But we're kind of naturally tuned into that already. And so that brings you a level of like happiness. And I f see in the world, like if you're struggling to be happy and if you're dealing with depression, one of the big things is to open yourself up to the real magic of reality instead of buying into this little narrow view of like, okay, this is all there is and we've figured this all out and there's no more mystery left. It's all mystery. If you can open to it, if you have a horrible disease, like you were mentioning Parkinson's, yeah. you know, you can open to wellness and be able to receive the medicine. That's so. right, yeah. And so with Makuna, if you, you're you wondering like, okay, you know, how, how do I use Makuna? Makuna <clears throat> is very good for Parkinson's because it's the best thing ever found against Parkinson's actually, because it's working to anti-stimulate, you know, Parkinson's, that overstimulation of our, basically of our substantia nigra. You know, it's the central core of our brain. We've got stimulants coming in from every direction, light stimulation, electromagnetic stimulation, food stimulation, advertising stimulation, and it just goes on and on. Eventually, your body can get a nervous reaction, and that is the Parkinson's syndrome. And one of the best ways to alleviate that is Makuna standardized to 15% L-DOPA. And that what that does is it basically neutralizes a disturbance in the what's called the shikimate pathway, mm. which leads all the way to the development of neuromelanin in our substantia nigra, which is the core of our brain, which controls our motor capabilities. And so it kind of jumps right through into that checkmate pathway and just like sorts out a problem that's there because the problem are in the precursors to the L-DOPA and all of a sudden it goes, hey, well, here's the L-DOPA right here. And the body goes, oh, good. And it doesn't have to deal with all these problems that are that pre uh, precede it. That's funny. Yesterday I shared some chocolate with someone and uh, she was saying that she, she looked in it and said, oh, there's Mucuna in here. I've been really wanting to get some Mucuna because she said she was really edgy and uh, that's that's the kind, that's what they want to get, the 15% uh, L-DOPA. Yes, yep, you can get that standardized. You can even get that in a health food store. It's just amazing what we can get. It's incredible. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, we live in, uh, in the best of times and the worst of times, and as bad as things get, I like how you say they're just, there's always that solution there for us. So you, you've had an incredible journey with uh, t going literally up and confronting the beast on Santo and living to tell about it. And so I know that everyone would like to hear a little bit about your your kind of epic saga in your battle with Monsanto. I mean, they, they took over your, your business from the inside out. Yeah, right? yeah. Basically, I had a business partner who wanted out. Two other guys came in, bought into the company. A guy had, I had met through my friend um, Kai Nygaard. And uh, one of these guys, as it turned out, was the son of Monsanto, literally. He was literally the son of the guy who ran Monsanto for 10 years, um, Earl Harbison. And when, when, cause we start immediately, as soon as that guy came in, we started having problems. One problem after another problem, after another problem, after another problem. It was just, when, after about nine months of this, one of my employees came to me and was like, check this out and showed me David Icke's biggest secret in the book. And there was Earl Harbison right there. And I was like, whoa. And then we started researching. We found out it was his dad. 
and then and then as soon as we outed him he started it was like it was like you know these people are he was in his book or like how how was his association with david ike well, David Icke had written about the genetic oh, modification okay. programs see, going on with Monsanto there and the GMO was. programs, and his father was named there. It was the same name. And we're like, wait, could they be related? And it was exactly the same name, right? And so we're like, wait, it's got to be the father. And we found out it was his father. And then we found then he denied it, whatever. And then eventually we found out it was true. And then eventually we found out he was consulting his father regularly. And it just went on and on. That was an eight-year battle and saga. Actually, I and remember just, when we were skiing in uh, Boulder, um, outside a, a, a Boulder. There, you were, you were, you were in it. You were having court battles, and uh, you know what was that like? How did you get through it? And I mean, what I, came I mean, of that? It, it, you just, I just turned it over to God. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. it was one of those. It was so intense. It was so intense. You just imagine every dirty trick in the book, every legal dirty trick. If I didn't have the lawyer that I had, I would have been railroaded. I would have been destroyed. They came at you with oh, everything. With everything. And they're Every the ones. Every dirty trick in the book you can imagine. Every single thing you can imagine. An eight year saga. Eight years. Eight years. So it really, it took eight years of my life. They took eight years of my life away from me, actually. You know, just dealing with all this. Just in, I want to just get back to a happy life. But they couldn't stop stealing. They couldn't stop stealing. Even when I separated myself away from the company, I was like, just take it, get it, get away from me. They kept using my name on the products. They kept put they kept stealing. Right. They could not stop stealing. And and I found that with different people in the business world is that they will steal, 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 steal until they until literally they can't get away with it anymore. And they'll just at the last second stop. It's like we're here to be creative beings and the people who aren't tapped into their inner being or their higher self and can't create for themselves they have they got to go take it from other people that's right that's it that's 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 a rudolf steiner thing rudolf steiner says if you're not in your creation mode if you're not in creation oh. then you're in parasite mode oh. right and, and there's two types of parasites there's the materialistic parasite and then there's the escapist parasite and that's fundamental to the anthroposophical cosmology you know like what 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 our reality actually is and that's why we see in our world lots of escapism and we see in our world lots of materialism because both of those are parasitic attempts at creation that that says it right there what uh, AI tries to do and that whole movement is is like trying to play God trying to uh... play the human brain hmm and so this is this is what another Rudolf Steiner thing I think is really cool is Rudolf Steiner says that stuff's not an advancement in nature that stuff's subnatural, like these mathematical the algorithms they're mimicking that's right they're mimicking what is all we're we're already beyond that our human consciousness is already beyond that so we're actually going backwards what AI re really represents is a subnatural phenomenon not a, not an advancement so when Elon Musk says. It appears the world is just a mathematical uh, hologram. Is he talking about the mimic of source and creation? You think? Oh, that's interesting. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Be I mean, it's interesting that these guys can get away with saying stuff like that. <laughs> but meanwhile, we've got scientific research by you know people like Andrea Poharich and and many many researchers who studied Yuri Geller, for example, and many other psychics under controlled scientific conditions. But that data is not allowed in. You, you, somebody like Elon Musk can say, oh, yeah, we're living in a hologram, all this other stuff. Meanwhile, we've got crazy evidence of all of this psychic phenomenon, telekinesis going on, teleportation of objects, all kinds of interesting things. And guess what? It's not brought into the conversation. It's just a trip. It's like, so I, I kind of see that that's what that is, is, is like a, you know, this, that the whole world's a hologram, everything's an illusion. That, that's very, what, as Rudolf Steiner would say, escapist or luciferic. Mm -hmm. And the, everything is the pill for every ill and everything is physical and materialistic is very what he would call aramonic or very materialistic. Mm. And so we're, we're battling both those demons, for lack of a better term, in our We, we in live our in world. duality. We live in a, and th those two things are, are battling for the control of creation. And all you have to do to alleviate escapism or materialism is just get into creating. And this is why, by the way, there's a big surge right now in people doing art, coloring books, mm. getting back to the things you did when you were kids, you know, cutting things out, making things with your kids. Because when you're, when you're creating, you're in that flow mode. 
all these distractions out there are just distractions that want to keep us from really they don't matter because if we just do what uh, we are inspired to do and we follow that bliss then we're going to be adding to the creation and that unique creation that we as an aspect of source are, are, are here to do so i know that you are very well adept at entering and staying in that holy flow and so let's uh, let's leave our uh, audience with uh, some some practical tips that you, you can share from your life experience of h how to have the best day ever. Okay, cool. One thing is like just create art. Okay, that's one of the most important. You know, that's what I'm trying to say here. Is yeah. like get your coloring book out, create art, get a get a journal out, take notes, get back into writing, get back into things that you were doing as a kid that got you into that creative flow. When you eat live foods, when you eat um, like superfood chocolates like this, it helps so much. <laughs> I mean, it's like if you have any of the other stuff, like, you know, you have stuff that's dried out, brittle, you know, is, is cooked to death. It doesn't have any vitality left. And so what, what ends up happening is your body has to go, oh, my God, we have to, you know, pull up all this energy mm. to try to keep going and stay in that creative mode. So to have the best day ever, you just kick off the day with something that's exciting for you and interesting for you and innovative and keeps you in that creative center. For example, let's say you know you had been wanting to write a book. Get up first thing in the morning and just write a paragraph, write a page, write something. Get going, and then that, all of a sudden you go, "Whoa, I got that page done." Then you get to the next creative project. Let's say you're, you know, you got to get your kids to, um, you know, do something for you, like clean the house or clean the laundry or you know whatever, something like that. Get creative of how you're going to pitch that to them, and you know, start thinking up something clever, or maybe you're going to reward them, or you know, get creative. Nice. And that ultimately drives off all the problems. You know, escapism is a massive problem in Western civilization, right? It's leading to alcoholism, drug addiction and all this other stuff. Materialism is a massive problem in Western civilization. It's leading to, oh, technology is going to save us. Our phone's going to save us. You know, the next materialistic possession is going to save us. All of that is gone, wiped out as soon as you're creating. You, and of course, that helps you to not, to enhance the positive thoughts and not focus on, on the negative. Yeah. So if, if your creation is your escape, then that's a good way to escape, to take yourself away from spiraling into some story or stirring the soup even more. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you've, pra practical things you've done to get yourself into the zone as far as, I mean, it's not just getting into a, a creative flow. You do, you, of course, you follow what your interests are. Mm -hmm. and, and being in the creative flow is like surfing. The wave doesn't last forever. Uh huh. You know, you're in the way of, oh, well, yeah, you're in the creative flow, and then boom, you know, you're, then you got to get in the next one. So you're always just trying to get in to surf that wave. Yeah, yeah. That's really what it's about. So how do you, how do you get in the flow? I like to do um, simple things, be, being barefoot, uh -huh. walking outside, gardening, deep breathing, yoga, drumming for sure. I'm a drummer. He's always got his sticks. He's always got my drumsticks. My drumsticks are over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I always have something. You didn't show up with anything but your drumsticks. It's like that's that's my that's my normal you know routine is yeah. like flipping the drumsticks around, playing little beats and stuff, and that's the way I get into the flow. Music, nice. music nice. is a really good way to get in the flow. And then another thing that really gets you in the flow is just connecting with people, connecting with you know your team, connecting with others, and just going you know like getting into that social interaction of your day. You know maybe it's when you show up to work, or maybe it's when you start you know communicating with your family, or or, or you know whatever your your normal life is like. And what that does is it starts to get you into like, you know, the real thing that makes life magical, which is your interaction with other people. Hmm. Because I think at some level, and I think you probably agree, that one of the greatest things about this world is love. Or it's maybe the greatest. And, and the love that you share with other people and the way you relate to other people and being in that love and celebrating that love is a really wonderful way to get into the holy flow. It's Would you attribute your, uh, I mean, you are an international... I would say legend at this point when it comes to the health and wellness movement. Would you attribute a lot of that to what you're talking about? Definitely, I would. I would say. I mean, one thing for sure that I've been able to do, even in spite of all the Monsanto battles and all of that stuff, was as I was able to stay in doing what I love. Right. Even nice. though I had to deal with that on the side, I was still able to be out there in front of the people. I was still able to do the talks. I was still able to really enjoy the the growing of the food, the investigation of what's in this food, the details about what this stuff can do for us, 
So I was always able to keep that going, you know, all along. And that's what kept me happy and kept me sane. Cool. And you're always researching. I know there's uh, we have a little bit of more time left. And uh, you you told me something in Hawaii that we didn't get to go deeper on. I'd like to do it right now. OK. And talk about heavy water. Oh, deuterium depleted water. This is some. This is another scientism thing. Scientism is always saying, or materialism is saying, oh, science is settled and this is as far as it's going. But we know in science, it's never settled, right? It, there's always advances. And one thing we can say about science is it changes. And this is one of those things. Hydrogen is very different in its chemistry from deuterium, even though they're both hydrogen. Deuterium is a heavy form of hydrogen. So it has an extra neutron in it. And for many years, the whole dawn of the scientific era and the nuclear era, there was a st story of like, oh, it's it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. And then one day the scientist said, well, maybe it's not the same. And he started sprouting tobacco seeds in D2O, deuterium oxide, instead of H2O. Did they not turn out too well? And it didn't turn out too well. In <laughs> fact, you cannot sprout any seeds in D2O. D2O is to entirely and totally toxic. Totally toxic. And he did various different ratios. Okay, it's maybe if it's 50% D2O, and they found that the growth would happen, but it would be stunted. And he started to realize, and eventually it was concluded, and, and eventually that technology and that knowledge was taken by the Russians and then the Hungarians to a very startling conclusion, which is that the accumulation of deuterium in our body is what causes us to break down. We have more deuterium in our body than all magnesium and calcium combined, combined. And so there's a threshold. Once we get to a certain threshold, say 156 parts per million of deuterium, we're in trouble. So this led to, to the rise of the whole idea of how do we get that deuterium out of our body, the isotope of hydrogen, which is supposedly just like hydrogen. And that was a very, very big story that eventually led the Hungarians to make a breakthrough, which is deuterium depleted water. And that's in our environment where people like in, in this Los Angeles area because of certain things that have happened is, uh, is, it, is present, it around? It's ever present in the environment. It's so everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's all the water, any tap water, any spring water, anything has some amount of deuterium in it. And so what we are always, always trying to do is try to get the stuff that is the lowest amount. Okay, so now... So deuterium depleted water. Deuterium depleted. You want the lowest amount of deuterium. Okay. You want to get it out. You want to get the lowest amount out. And it was found out by the Hungarians that if you could get fractionally distilled water, so you distill the water and that last little heavy bit that's left over, that's, that's the heavy water. It distills off last. You get rid of that. Then you distill the water again. That last little bit distills off last. You get rid of that again. Then you do it, you do it like five times. Ah. Fractional distillation. Eventually, you only have the water with hydrogen. In it. Let's say it's 25 parts per million deuterium. You know, so you've, you've lowered it from, say, a normal 150 to 25. If you drink that water consistently for six weeks, your body will flush the deuterium out of itself, and you will become younger, and your symptoms will go away, and any problem or whatever your diagnosis is will gradually dissipate. Wow. So there is deuterium in all water? Yes. And so by fractionally distillating it down, then it's it's robbing that, it's pulling in that uh, deuterium from your body and, and excavating it. That's out. right, exactly, because your body goes, wait, we got a chance to get this stuff out. We're not getting bombarded with 150 parts per million. Now it's just 25. <laughs> We can do this, and your body will flush it. And I'm sure the charcoal helps with that. It right? does. It, charcoal is amazing at neutralizing isotopes. I mean, if you think about any nuclear reactor, the main thing that's used to neutralize the nuclear reaction is carbon. Okay, if we're if we're uh, we're here at this point, we have to honor Dr. Patrick Flanagan. Oh yeah, uh, rest his soul, yeah. who has passed recently, and who who had the uh, the crystal energy, which was like dual tetrahedron silica molecule that escorts out the heavy metals and toxins. So yes. it, ha it works similarly to zeolites and charcoal. Yeah? Yes, exactly. In fact, in, you know, when I talked to Patrick about this, he had it, what crystal energy is, is a zeolite. And it's a, a zeolite he invented. And it's one of the best detoxifiers there is. I, I, I love activated charcoal's detox, but I also love zeolites. And I also love crystal energy. And I also love clay and many other, and you, also love fiber. Do you still take uh, uh, crystal energy, mega hydrate? I still take crystal energy and mega hydrate. I had some crystal energy the other day, the last of it, but I got into my water and, and drank I had some. I had some too. So uh, Dr. Patrick Flanagan, 
is an Einstein level genius that wrote the first book on pyramid power. He wrote patents for NASA when he was 12 years old. He created the first dolphin human communication translator, and he created the neurophone, which allows you to hear through your skin for deaf people. So this guy created the world's most powerful antioxidant, uh, the mega hydrate, which actually is, goes in. And you know that's why you grew up on an orange juice farm and Fruits and vegetables are naturally high in hydrogen when they're first picked and then they dissipate. And so he microclustered the like a vitamin C molecule would be the size of a football stadium. And he made a molecule that if you're in the stadium, it would be the size of a dot in your hand. And each of those, the vitamin C and the dot, each have a negatively charged hydrogen electron that goes around it that escorts out heavy metals and toxins. And so to be able to go to every nook and cranny of the body pull out the, the, the toxins and, and, and do the essence of free radical scavenging and uh, be an antioxidant. It's, it's pretty incredible. So you turned me on to taking uh, some mega hydrate before you fly and after you fly yes. and you don't have jet lag. Yes, mega hydrate is hydrogen not deuterium and i talked to patrick many times about the dangers of deuterium oh, yeah? he, he knew he knew deuterium is one of the worst things there is and uh and that's that was one of the main things about mega hydrate is like it's a hydrogen concentrate not hydrogen a deuterium concentrate. concentrate which it basically is like deuterium depleted substance hmm. right the more of the mega hydrate you take the more you're getting that hydrogen and the more your body goes let's get rid of the deuterium ah, similarly yeah and essentially the younger you become as a result of that i mean you feel a buzz on that stuff for sure it's so it's, good. it's uh it's like this calm energy but uh it's it's pretty powerful and you know it's kind of like when you drink that fresh squeeze you know we got the oranges going off uh -huh. in hawaii right now and i'm juicing fresh squeeze orange juice with my daughter and have that first thing in the morning and i am just going that's that's what i had this morning oranges really yeah because you know we're in southern california in the winter yeah naval oranges in southern california are epic it, <laughs> they're so we can't sweet. compare to hawaiian quality we no, know that. no they're all pithy in hawaii and it, they're nothing like these guys yeah so that's cool yeah it's cool. back to your roots yeah back to the roots so that's awesome, man. Um, you know, you uh, you uh, thank you for sharing some of uh, your your wisdom and some of the uh, ways people can get in the flow. But you have a whole course on on uh, entering the the holy flow and having the best day ever, yes. right? Many many that I put out there: powers of intention, the um, how how to get into the holy flow, how to get into your creative center. Also, voluminous amounts of stuff on nutrition. And uh, if you want to track me down, maybe yeah, I can leave my yeah, website. Yeah, please. Just davidwolf.com. Cool. Um, that's where you can get the charcoal and, uh, you, you know, check out some of your courses and stuff. And, and all my articles. I think I've got 4,000 articles up there. Wealth and of knowledge. For lots sure. of stuff. And it's also a portal so you can find me, you know, if you want to track me back to Instagram or Facebook or any of these other places. I put out most of my, my stuff, though, now on Telegram, interestingly. Which uh, yeah, is, I've been communicating with you there. Yes. And yeah. that's that's something new. You know, these some of these stations, these media centers whatever they got more into censorship lately oh and yeah i actually just got uh, my video that i made on the coronavirus taken off of youtube they just took it off they just took it off yeah i said you know it may not be what we think it is it could be is it uh really fifty thousand people getting it each each day or is it a hoax so what are your thoughts on that boost your immune system <laughs> boost your immune system we have 8,000 people who died in 2019 in America from the flu 8,000 people so right now we're at 744 people died of the coronavirus so it doesn't compare to the normal flu yet right so we just got to put things in perspective and boost your immune system make sure you take your iodine and if you really want the best super mineral antibiotic I'd recommend coated silver coated like, silver. like nano silver it's like a nano silver nano silver is also very good awesome yes well if you like this Check out World Awake TV. Uh, that's my YouTube channel where they just yank this. There must be something to it if they're gonna. I never had that happen. To me. That's they crazy. Take off. Oh, the, they deleted the my YouTube channel without any warnings, any strikes, anything. They just erased it. And then also head over to medicinal-foods.com for uh, some of this uh, amazing chocolate. That's pretty. That's good. Awesome. that chocolate. Uh, that's there you go. There it is. Yeah. Boom. Enjoy the chocolate. Okay. Thanks. Scott Cubby, you're the best ever. That was awesome, bro. Right on. Thanks. It's always great hanging out. So and cool. uh, listen, we are dreaming the world awake. Have the best day ever. Mm -hmm.